Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Gid Spotlight. My name is Haley Sandell, and I am a visual communication intern here at the Gibbs College of Architecture. Today, I am talking with Krista Woods. She's getting her master's in interior design, and she'll be graduating in May of 2021. Hey, Krista. Hi, how's it going? Not too bad. How are you? Great. So can you start off by telling us a little about yourself and your life leading up to Gibbs? Yes, so I'm actually from central Oklahoma, born in Norman, but um, I've lived most of my life in Shawnee and graduated at a much smaller school in Bethel High School before coming into OU. I had um, originally thought that I wanted to do meteorology, so I came to the school for the meteorology program. Um, Of course, there was no other option, but I would be lying if I said that was the only reason, just because um, the school has always been near and dear to my heart. And so um, it wasn't long after doing the meteorology program that I started getting a gut feeling that I wanted to go into interior design. But it wasn't really until um, I met my roommate on the Disney College program. Oh, cool. Who was a graduate of the SCAD program in interior design. I got to look at her portfolio and see what she was really doing. That's when I, I noticed that interior design wasn't just picking curtains or paint colors. It was a lot more to that. And it was technical. It was creative. And so that's when I really decided that um, this was something that would really uh, work with me. And so uh, I went ahead and finished my bachelor's degree in human relations. But then that's when um, I've decided to come back to continue my education, getting my master's program and getting that um, degree in interior design that I've always wanted. That's really cool. What a wild twist of fate to have an interior designer roommate when you think you're interested in this. It, it's almost, yeah, like it was, um, it was meant to be. Yeah, definitely. So how, how did you choose to go from meteorology to human relations to interior design? That's a, an interesting batch of degrees. It really is. And a lot of it, um, I can say it relates to my experience of working at Disney. Uh, I noticed that I really do like interacting with people, though I can be a bit introverted. Um, I do like having the interaction with people. And, you know, come to find out, you know, my bachelor's degree will work really well with my interior design degree later on in life, Um, because that's what you do. You're always working with clients and um, helping them out with their design solutions. And um, I love human relations, but I love that um, I'll be able to apply it to something practical that's more meaningful for me. And so it was a long roundabout way to get to where I wanted to be, but... (laughs) Um, it will certainly be useful. Yeah, definitely. Talk about being well-rounded. So it sounds like there are different types of master's degrees. So like uh, your first professional. So how does a first professional master's differ from other master's programs like post-professional? Right. So I'm coming in without a bachelor's degree in interior design. And um The program is geared a little bit different for me. Um, It's a combination of those master's um, graduate level courses and leveling courses. Um, So those leveling courses are getting me up to speed and um, drafting skills and the technologies, you know, so that way I can uh, have that basis of design skills, but then also understand interior design at a graduate level and some of the research topics that are available. And with my program, um, it's either a six to seven semester um, program. I'm electing to do the six semester program, which means there's a little bit more workload on my plate um, semester to semester. Um, So that extra year um, helps with me qualifying for the NCIDQ exam at the end of all of this. I believe you have to have 60 hours. Wow. Um, In courses. (laughs) Yeah. And it's just a lot to learn in just three years time. But it's very rewarding. And unlike other master degree programs, um, I'm not completing a thesis. I'm actually going to be completing a final project, which is to be determined for me. Um, That's coming up this last year. Dang. Well, congrats. You've made it through a lot. (laughs) It's been a lot. (laughs) So 
What type of career do you plan on pursuing after you graduate? Obviously, interior design, but... Right. Um, I would really like to go into commercial design. Um, I've especially found a few firms in the area that are really exciting to me and that I'd like to um, pursue a career with when I graduate. Gotcha. What What do those firms do in particular that makes them uh, more exciting to you? The firms that I... Um, really enjoyed interviewing with the most were the firms that um, took on several different types of projects. I know a lot of times you talk about finding a specialty in interior design, but um, since I am still kind of new to this, I love the opportunity of getting to dabble into different types of projects and to be more of a well-rounded interior designer. And I believe that the things that I learn from those different types of projects will make me a better designer um, overall. And also getting that experience um, from, you know, being able to be a part of the design project from beginning to end. I think that's really important to be able to do all the parts of the design. Yeah. And so um, there's definitely been a few firms in the area that I think that just really fit well um, with that style of, um, or that firm organization. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's really cool. Well, good for you. So how how did you decide that you wanted to come to OU specifically? Like there are many other schools out there. Why OU? Right. Um, so I feel like I kind of went into this a little bit earlier, um, but OU has just, I've been around central Oklahoma my whole life. I mean, it's always just been been a goal of mine, even though I knew there was other options. I've always been happy with Norman and with OU. And when you tour the campus, it's so beautiful. And, you know, that on its own is very inviting. Um, so I've always loved OU. I loved OU in my bachelor's program. So I knew it was going to be in good hands when I came back for a master's degree. Uh, it's always been the easiest choice. Gotcha. That's really cool. So. What current projects are you working on? I'm not working on a current project, but I could talk about um, my project from studio last semester. Yeah. And so with that, um, it's probably the one I'm most proud of so far. And that was uh, our professors, Rick and Maya, were able to uh, partner up with an actual organization that is looking to implement a museum in Oklahoma City. So this is the uh, the uh, National African American Jazz Legacy Museum. And so oh, cool. being able to work with an actual client with this project has just been the best experience. We met with them in person before the coronavirus, and we were able to do some research with them, see what they were looking for in this project. And we did receive their feedback at a few key points throughout the semester um, that really tailored the design um, spurred some revisions and it was just, you know, practical um, to get that experience while in school. So compared to the other projects that we've taken at, in my program, I just felt like that was very valuable. Um, yeah, in, definitely. in addition to that, we did present our projects to the clients via Zoom. So it might have been a wild um, semester, but it worked out in the end. Yeah, well, and being able to meet with them in person and like see your client and it, it just makes it so much more real. Uh, what, what was it like uh, going from like in person with interior design to going to zoom calls? Is that a big difference? Is there a lot that changes? I mean, it's wild because um, in studio having feedback with the professors and having those critiques is very important along the way to stay to stay on top of your project, um, you're always making revisions. And so uh, it was definitely an adjustment. And as uh, anybody would admit, it happened fast. You know, it was a fast change. You probably, um, I don't think the instructors were expecting, you know, the end of the semester to be that way. But I, I have to give credits to our professors, Rick and Maya, for being excellent um, instructors through and through. I know that it was um, 
it was a lot for them to be able to keep up with the feedback um, via Zoom and being able to control the screens. Um, it was fantastic, you know, how they, they handled the transition. Yeah. Yeah, it's big for everyone. It's really cool to see how professors adapted to that uh, new setting. So can you tell me a little bit about the Materials Resource Library and your experience with that? Right. Um, so I, in my graduate program, work in the Materials Resource Library for the students. A uh, really funny story before I started the program and started my time there. Uh, just a couple weeks before, that was when um, the basement flooded. So oh, everything no. that was in there was actually thrown out of the room into a dry oh. space. And so when I took over, I, um, it was a lot of, a lot of organizing. And so it was my first time really looking at um, interior products. And so finding out the system to organize them, like it was really just thrown in there, but um, turned out to be a great learning experience. Um, now that I am two years in and I've had um, several people help me out in there as well, uh, we're able to bring in, we bring in probably upwards of 40 or some reps uh, choose to send things and some of them will visit in person, but we have upwards of 40 material manufacturers send us samples to update our library a semester. Um, so this wow. means that we have up-to-date current materials for the students to come and check out. Um, so that way, they know what's out there on the market and they know what they can use for their interior design projects. They know where um, they might be able to look for something if they've got something and, you know, an idea in their head. And so it's become such a great resource and I highly recommend for all students to make use of it. Even if it's just coming in and just seeing, you know, well, who's a new manufacturer that I don't know of? And then looking them up and seeing what kind of products they have, because I guarantee you, this um, just knowing that practical knowledge is going to be so helpful when you're in the workforce. And um, some of the uh, reps that also come visit to bring samples, they also ho host um, lunch and learns with the students. Oh, cool. And so it's really fun that, you know, you kind of get to build those relationships with the people you'll be working with later on. And uh, again, I highly recommend come visit the materials library. Um, we've put a lot of work into it and it's really come a long way. That sounds like an excellent resource, a really good hands-on opportunity. Uh, where Where is the library located? It's just located underneath the Dean Suite in the basement. Um, oh, cool. We do have hours that are determined by, you know, myself and the student that would work there. Um, but the hours are usually posted on the door. They're usually sent out via email. And so definitely um, reach out or come visit. You know, it's, a, again, worth, worth, the, worth the stop. Yeah, absolutely. That's really awesome. Uh, so what, uh, a broad question, but what's your favorite thing about Gibbs? You know, I have to say, um, especially since I've, have a bachelor's degree from another college on campus, but the uh, faculty in this college is just the best. Um, you, I mean, it's not an easy thing um, to achieve any of the degrees that are part of this college. It's definitely a lot of time and hard work spent, but having the great faculty support has just been, it's been life-saving. It's been um, really nice knowing that I can have that great feedback from them, have that great partnership with them. Um, it's definitely, I can definitely attribute my success in this program to everyone that has been a part of my, of my um, journey through this program. And so if, you know, if they're listening to this, you know, you guys are amazing and you definitely get all the credit and all the success of the students. Oh. That's fantastic. All all the faculty that I've ever spoken to at Gibbs, they're just such warm and inviting people, which is really reassuring. They really are. And I mean, there's definitely the high points and there's always low points, but they're always there um, to help you out through uh, whatever it might be. So it's definitely been um, even more so than the human relations program, not to, not to, um, 
dog them on, you know, how their program is, but it's just incredible. The faculty in this program, it's unbelievable. That's awesome. They're a fantastic resource and they help even more with like networking and stuff. Like right. what, what's been your experience with networking via Gibbs? I have found um, in my time and not just with the reps that come visit and help lunch and learns, there have been several networking opportunities that they um, provide. Of course you have career fairs, but um, they also had a um, mentor day um, just last semester or the semester before um, where they brought a lot of professionals in and we had the whole day um, to interview them, um, have them review portfolios, have them look at um, resumes. And so uh, we um, take a lot of trips and visit firms or visit construction sites. There's just a lot of opportunities to meet with the professionals out in the um, out in the world. And I highly recommend any student that's looking into the program or any current student to make use of all the networking opportunities. Even if you're not looking for an internship or you're not looking for a job at the moment, it does not hurt to make those connections. And again, I'm very introverted. Networking is not my strong suit, but it has been very rewarding just to talk to the professionals. Um, I've definitely received some tips from that mentor day that helped me. Um, just recently, I was able to win a portfolio uh, competition for ASID in Oklahoma City. Okay, and so those, those, those tips really contributed to that. So it never hurts to start early with meeting um, those con- or making those connections. Yeah. And it's a fantastic way to get a job once you graduate. It's reassuring to go into the workforce and know people. Right. And even if it's just meeting with um, your material representatives, you know, you might think they they may just only help you out with them um, finding a carpet. But I've also had a lot of them that are like, you know, hey, like, you know, we'll send out your portfolio to a few firms that we know are hiring. You know, it just you never know who you're going to talk to or knew, who knows. Um, who might be able to help you out in finding a job or finding an internship or finding um, what you need. Yeah, absolutely. That's really awesome. So kind of just something that you touched on very briefly in the beginning that I, I'm just curious about. What is the Disney College program? How, how did you get into that? Yeah, so the Disney College program is something I jumped into um, when I found out I didn't want to do meteorology. I was kind of just like, well, what do I do now? And so I actually met somebody on campus that was a representative of that internship. And I mean, she had me sold, you know, at Disney. So I I did the Disney College program actually a couple of times in my undergraduate. And it is a internship that's um, kind of a general internship, but it's offered to all majors. And with that internship, you actually move to either the Florida or the California location. You work in the parks, and then you can also take educational courses. So I was able to take, um, you know, like Marketing U, you know, which was a career development course and um, a few other courses with them. And uh, that's also where I met my roommate. So, of course, you meet a lot of fantastic people. Um, I was able to work with people from all over the world. I had roommates from all over the world. And it's just an experience you don't get um, in Oklahoma. So I highly recommend doing something like that, especially if, you know, studying abroad might not be your cup of tea. This is a way to get that experience without going too far. Absolutely. That's a really cool concept. I honestly did not know that that existed. And it never hurts to have a Fortune 50 company on your resume. I always get asked about it, you know, because it's there. And it's an experience I would never take back. And I still talk about it today. And there's still a little part of me that's thinking, well, hey, maybe I'll apply for that interior design internship at Disney. Or maybe I'll move back and work there one day. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really awesome. Being an interior designer for Disney. (laughs) That's so cool. Well, sweet. Uh, I think that's all I have for you today. Uh, Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? No, I think that's good. Perfect. Well, thank you for talking with us today, Krista. 
Thanks again for listening to the Gibbs Spotlight. Tune in next time to hear more stories from the Gibbs College of Architecture.